Alright, this is going to be my review of the 2015 Winnebago Travato 59G. Uh, this is my second Travato. The first one I had uh, was an early model and it had the uh, unpainted uh, bumper covers and some other features that have now been improved in the 2015 model. So uh, there are some videos online of the Travato, but um, I'm going to try to focus more on the technical details to give you some more information. All right, let's um, let's start with a walk around, and um, anyway, we got 16-inch uh, aluminum uh, wheels with uh, Continental uh, all-season 10-ply uh, 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 tires, so they're big old truck tires, uh, probably what you'd find on a pickup truck. So, uh, probably easily f uh, findable on the road if you had a flat. Uh, the Travato doesn't come with a spare tire, as you'll see. It comes with an inflator kit, just like most new cars do these days. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, th you have to decide if that's a risk you want to take or not. I'm comfortable with it. Uh, as you can see, uh, this van has the uh, painted uh, bumper covers and trim. Uh, it's called the silver, uh, bright silver deluxe package. It also has the uh, stainless um, trim panel uh, that's, I guess, stuck onto the standard black trim panel. That's a good look. I, I, I like it. Um, this is the uh, fuel fill. Uh, in the diesel model, this has the def fill here, uh, but this is a gasoline model, so you just have the uh, gasoline fill. Um, Inside you have, uh, this is the hood release, so we'll uh, take a look at that, take a look at the um, engine. There's a, uh, let's see, where are you? Oh, there we are. There's a catch, and um, this is a uh, 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Um, you have... Uh, all your servicing uh, uh, ports, that's your, at the top is your washer fluid, I believe that's the uh, power steering, uh, there's the oil dipstick and the oil fill, uh, you have a coolant fill, and um, this top one has the brake uh, reservoir, uh, your um, battery uh, uh, fuse box cover, and then this is your uh, this is your jump point. You hook your uh, positive terminal here, and then you hook the uh, negative terminal here, and you can jump start. You can also connect your battery charger there uh, your tr if you have a trickle charger. But as you can see, there's plenty of uh, access to the engine. Uh, of course, this uh, whole front assembly will come off if uh, you had to have something major done. Um, but uh, and uh, there's a prop rod for the uh, hood here, um, but we'll just close that up. All right. Uh, you have high-mounted headlights. Uh, they're not LED and they're not halogen. They're just standard headlights, um, which you'd expect, I guess, in a commercial-type vehicle. Um, down along the side, you have all your utility ports. You have your uh, fresh tank fill. Uh, this fills the 22-gallon uh, water tank uh, that I'll show you the location of that inside. Uh, this is your city water fill. Uh, there is a gravity fill inside the coach underneath the bench seat where the water tank is. Uh, otherwise, you just uh, fill it from, from here. Um, this is your park cable uh, connector. This is your 30-amp power connector. This is your, uh, your sewer hose. And... Um, as you can see, I used the Presto Fit model. It's the only one I could get that would fit this opening because you can see it's pretty, it's pretty tight. Uh, this is a short hose. I find it ideal for like dump stations, uh, but um, that fits pretty good in there. You probably, if you're going to go to campgrounds, you probably need an extension cable and carry that somewhere. Um, this is the refrigerator vent. Uh, there's a lower one. And then there's an upward, upper one. This van has a um, three-way absorption fridge, five cubic feet. I'll show you inside. This is your uh, furnace uh, exhaust vent. It's got a um, 16,000 BTU uh, gas furnace. 
uh, down below you have the uh, you have the gas, uh, the propane fill with a cutoff switch, and this is the um, bleed off valve. And then you have uh, the uh, of course the engine exhaust. And I'm going to crawl under here and show you some of under the van because here are your um, here are your drains. Now this is new on this model. Uh, my old van didn't have this here. They were kind of scattered about. But um, these are your, uh, your, uh, ooh, your fresh and hot water, I believe. And, and uh, anyway, under here you can see the, uh, the uh, propane tank is um, under, uh, under in here somewhere uh, yeah a lot of this is new with these shields my old van didn't have ah there you see they moved the propane tank to more of a center position on the van on my van it was over here but uh, that's a much better you can see the heavy metal uh, skid plate to protect it um, uh, over there is the um, entry step and uh, this looks to be the uh, gray tank, you can see. And uh, here you can see uh, the Group 31 uh, AGM battery. Now to me it looks like there's room for another battery. If you could get the bracketry, you could probably rig up a second battery. Uh, wouldn't be too difficult of a project. It's just how you support it, what you screw it into, would be what you'd have to work out. Um, okay, uh, we'll go to the back of the coach and I'll show you where the generator is. But I just wanted to give you some uh, views of underneath the van because I get a lot of questions about that. You can see the uh, muffler and exhaust, and beyond that, the black is the uh, 24 gallon. Uh, fuel tank um, and we'll take a look on, on the other side of the van there appears to be more room uh, I don't know what you put under there but there's a little bit more space on the, um, on the passenger side of the van alright alright here are your uh, this is the generator exhaust and then this is your your um, tank drain for your your uh, gray waste tank and your black drain. The black is um, is gravity uh, gravity dump. You just pull this handle, it's gonna come out. The uh, gray tank uh, has a pump. They call it a macerator pump. I don't think it's a macerator. It's not chewing up anything. It's more like a trash pump. Uh, it can handle some you know gunk in there, but because of where I showed you the position of that uh, gray tank and the way it drains, it has to be pumped to this discharge point. So you have to uh, connect your hose, pull this valve, and then there's a switch to activate that pump to pump it out. The, uh, the black tank is 11 gallons, which is pretty standard for a van. Um, the gray tank is 15 gallons. All right. As you can see, I've got the, uh, I got the bike rack and uh, roof rack uh, option. You can see there's a kayak rack on each side and uh, I'll go up there and show you the uh, the rack itself. I don't really plan to uh, put a kayak up there. I have a folding kayak but uh, I think it might be a good mounting point for uh, solar panels and there looks to be plenty of room once you get you know off the roof of the van a little bit it opens up the possibility for more solar. Um, all right, this rack. When I first um, thought about wanting this, I had and, and at the Hershey show, the guy tried to explain to me that this rack would fold down to basically the ground level, so you could uh, just easily put your bike on it. But that's not the case. What it does is this part folds up against and locks into here. So if you don't have a bike on here, it's more flush with the back of the van. Um, all it does is fold down and then you've got these support arms, these adjustable arms you can uh, strap your bike to. They're fully adjustable for two different bike locations. Um, so this folds down. You have to lift the bike up and set it in here. This is a heavy bike. This is about a 50 pounder because it's a, an e-bike. It's got that heavy battery. Uh, so, you know, you got to be a certain level of fitness 
to be able to hoist this bike up there. But standard bikes, I think a 25 pound bike, it'd be nothing to do that. But one of the things I like about the way this rack is, um, not only is it high enough, I have a stowaway two box that could conceivably still be connected here to the 3,500 pound hitch. Um, and it extends, oh, probably about three feet from the back of the van. You can put all your outside accoutrement in, in it. Um, but All right, so instead of using um, my stowaway box, uh, even though it would clear nicely in uh, underneath of this uh, bike rack, and you can probably still open the lid and get everything, uh, what I'm going to do instead, uh, for the time being, to see if I, how it works out, is I bought this Stanley toolbox and um, to put all my outside gear in. I've got chairs and tables and my barbecue grill and some other stuff I'll show you. Um, another thing I wanted to show you was there's a cable restrictor here on this door. Because you have these uh, ladders and the bike rack, you don't want it to damage the side of the van. So on each side they uh, put this cable in to keep the door from swinging too wide. I mean you still, you can see, you still have a really big aperture to get in everywhere you need, but the doors will not fold against the uh, the sides of the van. But anyway, uh, because they raised this uh, bed up so high, I mean when my old van it must have been, I don't know, down around here, um, so much higher, these giant uh, rolling toolboxes uh, will fit nicely in here and while you're traveling you can still fold the bed down and have full access to the bed without having to remove all this. Now when you get to camp of course you just pull this out. Uh, this is a rug, camp rug, and then this box. I mean it is pretty heavy with uh, all my stuff in it but uh, anyway uh, let's see if I can get it out of here. Yeah. And uh, then you, uh, you can, um, when you're at camp, you can just set this on the ground, and and uh, it does have a lock, and you can um, change it to a tree, or just I, I probably wouldn't worry about it. But in here, I've got a couple of folding pico chairs, a table, a collapsible trash can, a candle, my wheel chocks, the power cord, my barbecue grill. A bunch of uh, hoses and cords and all kinds of sundry things that uh, you could use outside without being all over the coach. So anyway, I'm going to try this for a while and see how I like it. Um, I actually have several of these and I thought about setting them up for different kinds of trips. I could set one up for a general, I could set up one up for the beach maybe with some beach stuff, specific stuff. or hiking trip or a kayaking trip so you got a lot of options because these, these are fairly inexpensive 70 80 bucks and um, and there's still room for my folding kayak uh, and some other things uh, even with this big box in here uh, if I was pressed I could probably put two of them in the van uh, it'd probably be a little tight but anyway the nice thing is is that you got your bike with you you can have your kayak you can have all this junk you still have a stopover on a trip somewhere and um, and still use the bed and not have to move stuff around the van or put stuff outside the van to take a nap. Alright, I was going to show you the um, up on the roof. So we'll close our There you go. Now you can see the um, this tremendous rack. You can see all these uh, kayak support brackets are just screwed on. You can unbolt that and take those right off. Uh, but this looks to be at least, I don't know, I'd say that's 60 inches or plus. Uh, if you wanted to uh, block the um, the roof vent, you could probably put quite an array up here. I don't think I would do that, but I think there's room maybe forward of that between that bar and the TV antenna. 
there's probably room for a 200 watt panel easy you probably put another one 100 or 160 watt behind the uh, roof vent uh, but uh, anyway you can uh, see it's bolted in the uh, in uh, the channel that's built into the van and uh, uh, you can see all the uh, end, uh, openings in the van roof are all sealed up with this heavy uh, black sealant so I don't think there's any issues with uh, leaks or worrying about leaks uh, which is pretty much standard for uh, B vans everywhere um, anyway you probably have to drill a hole to run the wire for any solar panel somehow or you might remove that antenna and uh, that radio antenna and maybe go through that hole see where that ends up all right so let me get down without breaking my neck all right okay anyway you have to be sure to uh, give this door a good slam without knocking yourself in the head. Um, I grab it from the top of the bike rack and just push it closed. And uh, the uh, one thing that happens is if this door isn't securely latched, your backup camera will not, you know, get out of reverse mode. It'll stay with that image with a prompt to close, turn it off. So um, it's probably a good thing. It's kind of a built-in uh, feature that uh, lets you know that your door is um, unlatched. All right, around the outside, you have several ports. You got the uh, one uh, 10 volt, and then so this is kind of unusual. You got a, a 12 volt and an uh, outside TV, a TV out coaxial. So if you were using a visu uh, audio visual device inside, um, you could broadcast it outside too. Uh, these are the brackets for the uh, Fiamma awning. Uh, it's a power awning. It's a F65, which uh, this is a special awning for you get when you get the roof rack package. It's kind of integrated with it, the way it's mounted and all. And it's motorized just like the standard carefree awning that comes with a standard Travato. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have is the LED light strip built into the uh, awning. So you give that up. And I'll show you where the switch for that is inside. Um, you also have uh, outside uh, audio speakers, so you can hear the TV inside, out here, or the stereo, and of course an LED uh, porch light. Uh, like I said, this is the uh, deluxe package. I guess it's super, super glossy. I guess it's made to, sim their intention is to simulate the look of a total window van. I mean, uh, there's other uh, brands of RV that have you know, glass along the sides. The uh, Pleasureway Luxor uh, has the glass. Uh, I believe the Zion is going to have the glass, the Road Truck Zion. But, you know, those windows are not, you know, they're heavy. And uh, so that's something, that's a downside to having that choice. I mean, it's a, it's a good look, but it's more weight uh, to carry around. Um, all right. Again, here's the, uh, this is the powered step. And, uh, there's a switch inside that you hold down to open it. Yep. And uh, it uh, will open on its own. Um, it's, it's interlocked with the ignition, so if you uh, turn the key, uh, you forget this is out, and you close the door. Uh, when you turn the ignition on, uh, this will automatically retract, so that's a nice feature. Um, this ottoman here, this is where the water tank is. You can see it's pretty large. Uh, I like to sit here with hang my feet out the door and look at the view. So some people have complained about this being in the way, um, but I really like it. Uh, I think it's a good place to sit. Um, also in this model, Travato, they improved all the cushioning. All the cushions are thicker, um, uh, better foam. Uh, the mattress, I'll show you the mattress is thicker too. Um, they probably have the best screen door in the business. Uh, it fits nice and flush. Um, you can see it's a, a, an accordion style uh, screen. Uh, it does a good job of keeping the bugs out. Um, some folks have said, well, it would be better if it 
open from this side and slid this way. Well, I guess it would. Um, but this is what you get. Um, I talked to the man that supplies this uh, screen uh, about an issue I was having with my old one. Um, the way these are, uh, you're supposed to lubricate these. Um, so they, you know, smooth ac uh, action. Uh, but I find that um, I think they're engineered to hold at the midpoint and pull it. And if you do that, it'll work fine for a million times probably. Uh, but I think if you're inside the van, your natural select point is going to be up here. So what you're doing is you're kind of pulling it off kilter. And what'll happen is this thing will um, can come out of its track. And what it does is this bracket here pops loose. So the fix is easy. You just unscrew these Take this off, clip it back on here, and screw it all back together. It'll take you five minutes, but it's an annoying thing that can happen um, if you're not cautious about always grabbing it from the midpoint. So I've just kind of trained myself to do that. All right, I was going to show you under the van on this side. And as you can see, there's the exhaust in the fuel tank. Uh, again, in the middle is the uh, LP. Uh, tank, uh, the step. Uh, there's a little empty spot here, but I don't know what you put, you could put there. Um, and then the gray tank uh, takes up pretty much the the whole width of the coach. You can see that the exhaust, the uh, outlet of the gray tank is there on the on the uh, driver's side. Um, let me show you the uh, what I missed was the generator. This comes with the uh, Onan 2800 watt uh, generator. You can see it's uh, it's a little lower uh, to the ground than you probably are used to seeing. Um, it's got this frame to uh, protect it, uh, but um, it, it appears to be a little lower. I think it's lower on this van than on my old Travato. Uh, I don't know why. Um, I think my old Travato sat a little higher. Uh, here you can see the uh, black tank. It kind of takes up the the width of a good part of the width of the coach. It's uh, same cross cross coach uh, setup as the gray tank. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's some kind of electronic gizmo, I'm sure. Um, and then. Uh, you can see the uh, this gas line. Um, this isn't insulated. It's just in this uh, combing. Um, I suppose you could get just some uh, pipe insulation and insulate a drain line if that's if you so chose to do it. I don't think I would do anything like that. Um, this is your uh, your uh, barbecue gas uh, port. Um, if you have a, 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 a grill without a regulator uh, you could use this but otherwise most of the grills I found have regulators so you can't use this kind of connection uh, all right all right I wanted to show you how far that is off the ground so that looks to be right at six inches which is a little bit lower than uh, my old van um, so that's something to think about All right, let's take a look inside. I'll show you some of the details in here. Um, as you can see, I put some of my own touches in here. Um, things I had in my old van, like I Velcroed um, this weather station on here. I have an outside sensor uh, Velcroed to the bottom of that exterior step. Uh, this surface is pretty good. This laminate is a good place to stick Velcro or 3M tape, and you can put things all over the van that you like. Uh, and then if you don't decide you don't like them, you can peel them off. I put this paper towel holder on again. It's all 3M tape under there. Uh, one of the new features of the new Travato is the this rack here. I put my spice bottles in there. Uh, there's another one over here. Uh, I don't know what you put in there. Maybe your phone or something you're going to charge. Alarm clock. I don't know. Um, of course you have... Oh, let's turn some lights on. Um... You have, uh, of course, your standard stainless sink with uh, pressurized water, of course. Um, 
you have your, all your bank of light switches, 110. This is a, again for park cable. So there's no place for TV, I guess for people that like to watch TV in bed. You could plug it in here and kind of set it on the counter and you can watch the TV. I don't do that. I don't have any interest in watching TV when I'm on vacation anyway, really. Uh, two burner gas cooktop with the piezoelectric start. Pretty standard stuff. You have this wonderful bank of drawers. And um, they all have these positive catches. And um, you can see I've got my all my junk in all these drawers. Uh, but it fits perfectly a, um, a cheap uh, utensil holder. And these drawers are fairly deep. They appear to be about, I don't know, three, four inches. So I got a bunch of utensils. And then um, whatever man needs is his grill tools. Um, and then in here, I stuck this knife rack on. You can get one of those at the Camping World or whatever. It's a good place to put your knives. Um, some people said they put their trash can in here. I think that's gross uh, because trash can always ends up being a mess. Uh, and you also, you need to get in here. So I've got a bunch of folding stuff, as you can see. Uh, dish pan, cutting board, barbecue tray. I got this cool folding uh, dish rack. It takes no space at all. Anyway, so I'm pulling all this stuff out. You're saying, Ron, why are you getting in here? But what I'm going to show you is this is your um, this is your uh, this is your uh, this is your shower pump. When you run the shower, you have to turn this pump on because it pumps the water out of the shower pan up and over into the gray tank. It has this filter, the spin-on filter you need to get into uh, and change uh, or we'll clean it out periodically. Um, they made it an improvement and put a secondary filter in the drain itself. So, uh, and a lot of uh, users have done the same thing on their own. Uh, so that should keep it uh, very rare you need to get in here. Uh, you can see there's some some wiring connectors in here and some other things that you probably don't have any need to get to. But uh, anyway, it's got this false floor. But, uh, and you got a 3M whole coach water filter and I put this thing for the baggies. But, uh, stuff back in here. I think on my old coach I probably cleaned that filter all of two times. Just I'm not a full timer. I'm a part timer, weekender. So I I found it was just fine uh, the frequency of getting in there. Um, I like to hang a towel and I just have this door and uh, close it up. Um, overhead storage I recommend the nesting uh, cookware that's seven pots in, uh, in a one cubic foot. So if you can buy compact stuff, then these vans work out nicely. This is all a one or two person would need for extended trip as far as cookware goes. And um, anyway, but it's a big enough cabinet for that. You have several uh, overhead lockers, put your dry goods and other equipment there. I'm old van. This is all I had, a, all the space I had for clothing. So, you know, made it tough. You'd have your trips worth the clothes, your window covers, uh, some linens and things, and this thing would be smack full. But, since the new Travato has these improvements, not only do you have this uh, mesh bag, it's a long length, you can put all your dirty laundry in there or whatever. Um, you also have all these nice deep drawers. Look at this deep drawer. This is about five, six inches uh, deep. You know, a his and hers maybe. Put all your sportswear and things you'll need for your trip. You can just put right in here. Um, that's what I intend to do. And then there's a third drawer. <laughs> I mean, every, every van needs a junk drawer, right? So, um, I put some odds and ends in there. It's kind of a shallow drawer. It's more like the, in the kitchen. It's about 
oh, I don't know, three inches deep or so. So it's good for kind of sundry odds and ends and things. Um, this is your furnace uh, grill. Um, also on the new van, since this bank of drawers is, is new for this uh, model, um, they extended it a few inches. It did narrow up the space a little bit, but um, but it created this extra cubby ahead of the wheel well, and I've got all kinds of stuff stuffed in there. A lot of things I've had in my outside box, like my uh, Progressive Dynamics uh, surge suppressor is in there, and uh, let's see. Um, oh, come on now. Oh, well. Um, and a lantern, and uh, a uh, one of those wheeled extension cord thingies, so that works out real good. And then in this one, I've got my leveling blocks, my toolbox. This is a good place for your your toolbox, and maybe some rubber gloves and uh, other little odds and ends that you probably get to pretty often. Um, okay, people have asked me about they improved this latch mechanism and it's more like a seat belt now and as you can see instead of before it was just mounted to the wall in the couch now it's mounted to this cabinet with a heavy uh, piece of angle and it's kind of hard to see so everything's black but uh, it's bolted through clean through and it's I'd be hard-pressed to have that come loose on me but um, the uh, mattress is so much nicer uh, it must be, I don't know, six inches or so thick. About double what the old one was. It's folded in the middle, uh, but uh, you can uh, have traditional bed linens on this thing if you want. And uh, But when you fold it up, you have to uh, kind of pull it at this bend so that it, um, so that it uh, will... Uh, bend and allow the mattress to uh, come up and then you just hold it you just hold it down and latch her forward and that's all there is to it but I suppose you could just um, use a mattress cover and not have this bedding maybe use your sleeping bag or you could uh, use one of those uh, bed linen things that uh, you see at Camping World. It's kind of winter on one side and summer on the other. Um, anyway, okay, bathroom. Um, it has a, a pretty large uh, wet bath and um, I've, of course, added a few touches in here. Uh, Command makes these uh, little cubbies you can uh, just stick to the wall. This stuff is really good for sticking, uh, sticking items to. You have the um, some dry storage. You can put some toiletries in there. Uh, there's another one over here. You can put your toilet paper in, I guess. Um, uh, there's a shower drain. And um, like I said, there's a... Uh, they put an additional little filter in there to try to keep the gunk out. Um, so, anyway, uh, it's got a pretty good lip. So a good bit of water could accumulate in here if you forgot to turn the switch on. Um, up here is the uh, is a switch. You turn this on. You near it. Okay. Um, another thing is, um, of course, this is China Bowl toilet. You've seen the toilet before. I got this little plastic uh, toilet paper holder at Walmart, and uh, just didn't want to end up taking up my storage cabinet uh, with uh, toilet paper. So that holds enough. The secret to these things uh, to keep in a van because you don't want that running around. Um, is a Velcro, get you some heavy grade Velcro and stick it to the wall. It'll stick to this, it'll stick to the side of this and it'll hold it better, keep it from tipping and moving around. If you do it on the bottom uh, underneath, it can get nasty. If it gets wet in here and mold and everything else, you don't want that under there. It'll be kind of gross. Uh, but it'll stay dry. If it does get any drippings, it'll it'll dry, drain, and uh, anyway, so that's a good item. I'll probably get a toilet brush holder and put it there and do the same thing, stick it to the wall. Um, okay, this towel bar I added, this is um, this is 3M uh, tape, and it's hold it securely. This is a nice smooth surface, but it's a rigid uh, shelf, so it's a good place to stick it. You can hang your towel to dry. This is another one of those command um, 
cubbies that sticks right to the wall with command strips. Uh, and I'll put like shampoo and stuff that will probably normally be okay to get wet. Um, and then you have my Travato, old Travato didn't have this cabinet and it's really nice to have. Uh, I really wanted it as one of my drivers. Um, but you can put your linens in there and other toiletries and supplies. Um, it'll stay dry. I don't, I don't think your, your, your uh, spray is going to spray in here because uh, the shower water is going to probably, it comes right, right to here. So um, they do make a shower curtain and I thought that was a pain in the butt so I uh, removed it but it's just a snap on uh, but it would keep this whole area dry if that's what you wanted um, you got a ventilator this is standard in these vans 12 volt it'll suck all the air out of here and uh, you've got this uh, this door this aluminum door uh, that is uh, on a track and uh, you just close it and it's completely the whole room is now water waterproof uh, you don't have to worry about shower curtain you don't have to worry about uh, water getting out or damaging any woodwork um, you do want to close this you've got a snap here uh, for when you're underway so it doesn't bang around and get itself broken okay um, refrigerator this is one of the things I really like about this van is this tremendous five cubic foot refrigerator with an integrated freezer you can take this out and have it all be cold drinks like if you use your van for tailgating and you just want drinks you can do that uh, this is a sensor the sensor system I bought so I can monitor the temperature uh, I can see inside and out but these are the controls uh, you have gas mode you have battery mode which I think that's really a driver for the Europeans they'll they, they don't like to drive around with the uh, gas running you don't want to go through tunnels with the gas on so uh, you put on battery mode but it does use a, an absorption fridge uses a lot of 12 volt power uh, so you could drain that battery down pretty good if you did that while you're parked now if you're running your alternators powering it so it's not a really concern and um, some people reported their refrigerators blowing out while they're driving down the highway I haven't experienced that problem uh, but I can imagine it, it, anything could happen if it's a really windy day uh, plus you're going freeway speed so uh, who knows what's going on in that outside compartment and then you've got um, 110 volt mode which if you're plugged in you know at all you want to use that mode and save your propane and save your batteries uh, but all the shelves are there's adjustable and they've got it's a really nice nice piece I got this um, little blower on Amazon you put batteries in it it lasts a month but it keeps the air circulating in the fridge so for an absorption fridge that really helps uh, even out the cooling and I've uh, found that it works really well um, then you get a crisper in the bottom. So it's a good fridge. Uh, on a two week trip I took down to the Keys, I didn't fill this fridge up. Um, hanging locker, it's got a really nice big hanging locker. And especially coupled with those drawers, you got lots of room for clothes. This is for dirty laundry. It's a neat little bag you can hang up and you carry that to the laundromat. Uh, you can take this, there's a, a pre-cut floor in this. I haven't taken this out but I assume you can get to the power distribution panel uh, here this is your all your fuse, <laughs> nice. all your fuses uh, are in here your 12 volt your 110 and uh, anyway this is a subwoofer speaker for the stereo system uh, it's got a hanging bar in there um, it's got a little pantry not much pantry space. That's one of the shortcomings of this floor plan. Uh, but you know, you can put quite a bit of stuff in there. Um, and then it's got the uh, 110 plug for your uh, microwave oven. And they left me some dust. Isn't that nice? Um, standard 1000 watt or 900 watt uh, microwave oven. It's pretty sizable, but it's not a convection. You don't get a convection with these. Um, that's just one of the shortcomings of this style of floor plan of van, uh, van. The um, convections are much bigger, so this is, you know, they wanted to keep it small. Uh, you've got the uh, fantastic fan. Uh, it doesn't have any sensors or anything. It's not a fancy one, but it does have uh, three speeds, and you can, I think you can set it to in or out. I don't know. Maybe not. I think it's just blows out at certain speeds. Yeah, that's all this one does. 
So uh, that runs on 12 volts, obviously, and and uh, it turns off when you close the lid. Again, that's that's my sensor. Um, okay, up front, you got a 22-inch TV, and um, I'm old man. You had to put um, some rubber. Uh, rub strips in here to keep this from rattling when you get on this van I haven't had to do that it doesn't seem to want to rattle so uh, that's a happy surprise you got some uh, storage in here I keep my walkie talkies and stuff uh, you've got your uh, a TV on and off switch you can isolate the TV from the 12 volt power um, it is a 12 volt native TV so you can watch this parked on the side of the road or while you're running down the road um, it's got another coaxial antenna uh, and it's got um, the internal antenna uh, and it's got a HDMI input but um, the, uh, the the king antenna here is the powered HDMI TV uh, antenna you can turn the direction of it with this knob uh, and it gives you a signal meter uh, there's an on off switch um, and it'll give you a hang on a second let's let's try that we'll turn it on and then you see it lights up it's showing me I've got two uh, yeah it likes that direction better and uh, anyway that gives you an idea and then you can I guess fine-tune it with this uh, and it's got its own off and on switch but that switch in the uh, in the uh, inside the cabinet does the same thing what you don't want to do is wear your battery down by having a bunch of stuff you don't under, you know know is on to be on. Uh, you got a DVD slash AM FM stereo inside outside speakers. It's uh, got USB. It's got Bluetooth, uh, so you can hook your you know your iPhone to wirelessly and stream your music through the entire coach and outside. Um, it's got a big cubby up here. Um, the extra cushions. Uh, this seat back comes with an extra cushion. Uh, you rest it against the door. I don't travel with that. And it also comes with another cushion because all this folds down and makes a bed. And another cushion goes right here. And there's a crossbar that fits between here and here. And um, you can set this up. And it's a pretty sizable bed. It's not quite as big as the bed in the back. But uh, it's certainly fine for a single adult or maybe a couple of kids. I don't know if a couple would want to sleep on this, uh, but maybe if they really like each other. Um, but anyway, it's uh, slightly adjustable. And I'll just show you. One of the improvements they made in this van is um, this seat height. Look at this. You can actually get your legs under there uh, without really straining yourself. Um, so. Uh, I think it's it's uh, more than comfortable. Um, I'm not a little guy, but I don't have huge legs, but it's good. Um, this table um, has a leaf, I guess, of sorts. You, uh, it uh, swings out, and then you can. Uh, move it it goes it'll service this chair um, but uh, all right underneath the, uh, the cushion here is um, the water heater uh, there's a board that goes across here I just took off but uh, this is your four gallon uh, electric water heater um, it has there's no plug to pull out to winterize it there's a valve down here you turn um, uh, so that's kind of convenient um, and then here's your uh, fresh uh, water drain uh, to drain the fresh water tank uh, your transfer switch and some other uh, junctions I don't quite know what they are this is seatbelt mechanism um, and you can see this is reinforced this is a proper um, safe uh, 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 seat for traveling underway um, but um, because of the location, it's prox there are rules about how close uh, an, an ignition source can be to the fuel fill. And I believe this is just too short of a distance to the main tank fill on the side of the van to have an LP uh, um, 
water heater uh, that close so they opted for this electric one I must say it uh, it does work very well it quickly uh, heats up the water in about 20 minutes with the generator running or with shore power um, some people have reported that uh, what they'll do is they only run for 10 minutes and get it kind of uh, medium hot and just use in the shower use full hot so basically you know usually when you shower you have the hot water on and the cold water on and you get the temperature you like well this you just get this to a midpoint and just use full hot and then you know you shortcut the process so I'm gonna try that I think it sounds like a good idea uh, it's just one of the shortcomings of this uh, this floor plan this is the compromise um, I don't think it's too much uh, it really depends on how much how often you have hookups how much you want to run the generator um, and that kind of thing but uh, I find that it's fine um, so let me put those all back together and we'll continue on. All right, this is uh, one of the things they changed about the van also is this air conditioner. Um, the housing is different, but there's also some different features about it. Um, I turned the generator on so we'd have some power. But um, you see the controls, it's the same functionally as the old Mach 8, um, but it's got... Um, It's got uh, the same features. You got a temperature control and uh, and uh, and you got uh, high heat, I think. Um, uh, but also, it's got these baffles that you can direct the airflow uh, from front to back. So this is the front. And then I guess if you're laying in the bed and you wanted it to all blow down on you, you'd open this one up. But if you didn't, you'd pull it closed and blow all the air uh, front ways. So uh, that's nice. Um, I don't think this is t terribly loud. I think the generator is more obnoxious than this air conditioner. So you'll have to be the judge of that. But I think uh, if you were just on shore power um, I don't think you'd have a problem with it anyway 13,500 BTU is what that is okay this is your uh, control center this is your generator start stop to start the generator you just hold the button down Um, you got your level tests. You can see what's in your black, your gray, your fresh water, your LP, and then your your battery state to charge. I've got a more precise battery gauge, so I don't really count on this much. Uh, your water pump, and then your water heater. Now this lights because the generator's on. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna turn that off and turn that off. Uh, but it's nice to have the hours meter on a, a low cost RV. You don't see that too much, so I thought that was good. This is your interior uh, LP switch. You've got to have um, both switches, the outside and the inside on, to have gas service. So that's a safety device. Um, of course, this is a analog type uh, thermostat for the suburban heater. So you just set it just like a normal thermostat you'd have in the house. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. Probably not good to just run it for such a short time, but I don't think it'll hurt it just this once. Okay, one of the improvements um, for the for the new Travado is they lopped off the corner of this ottoman, which sounds like a terrible thing, but actually it's a good thing. It makes this front seat much more usable because you have, let's see, yeah. Now it, you can slide it all the way around and watch TV. This is very comfortable. You can kick this back, you put your feet up. So this is um, this is a good spot. Um, plus you don't have to, you can play with the with the um, with the uh, how far back that goes. But you can see it clears nicely. Uh, that was a good thoughtful thing to do here. Before also the this, this was mounted a little differently and you would hit it with the back of the chair but there's not much chance of that happening. It's also a better fire extinguisher than the old one. Um, again, this is the uh, 
this fully turns around so you can see you can sit here use this table have a meal with somebody play cards and uh, you can adjust the table back a little bit um, I think the old van had more play in the amount of adjustment this one looks to be you know maybe an inch and a half difference so maybe that was something they had to do to get more seat and give it more height I don't know all right all your uh, all your standard uh, cab items let me uh, spin this chair around and uh, we'll show you all of the the features of the cab now Hopefully, there we go. Okay, you can see that um, you have a nice gauge cluster with um, a computer display. You can toggle between A and B trip meters and speed and average, uh, well the date. You got your remaining range. You got your trip distance. You got your fuel economy. The delivery economy wasn't very good on this one, uh, but probably they were probably towing a car. Uh, you got your instant. That seemed more normal to me driving it around this last day or so that I've had the van. Um, and then you got your average speed. Not very fast, huh? <laughs> anyway, um, you've got, uh, got fog lights, you got your uh, ESC, you got your hazards, you got central locking, which won't work with the doors open. You've got USB port. And uh, you got a 12 volt with the key that tells you these these work with the key. There's also a um, USB and a uh, audio auxiliary port down in this well here. You've got um, your battery boost. You can push the switch and use your house battery to help start the engine. You've got um, your mirror controls. Uh, the top and the bottom part, the convex part, are both powered. You can. Um, Move that. There you go. And uh, which is nice. Usually, just the top part. Uh, you also can uh, fully fold in your mirrors. That's a nice feature, especially if you're kind of jammed in a parking spot. Um, of course, power window, central lock. Again, you got. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. You got big cup holders and cubbies uh, down in each door. You've got a cubby in the center here for drinks and your phone. Uh, you got uh, basically a striptronic. You can uh, manually shift, um, but it's a six-speed fully automatic transmission. You got tow haul mode, uh, which you'd probably want to use since this is a fairly heavy vehicle with a small engine. Um, you've got uh, controls for your phone uh, and your audio system uh, built into the uh, steering wheel, which is the same thing. You got your cruise control on the stock. You got your light controls on the stock and you got your wiper controls on a stock. Um, you've got uh, uh, fully serious XM stereo system, you got standard radio, uh, you can play uh, media devices you plug in like your phone. Control your phone, you've got a TomTom -tom nav that um, works pretty well and uh, it's not the fastest in the world um, but it seems to work pretty well and um, and then you get your phone control I, don't, I haven't paired my phone yet uh, and then you've got more trip computer stuff uh, you can show your uh, data from your that's on the uh, same as on the console um, and you can um, go back to that and then you, you got a compass and you got your clock so you got a variety of things. I mean, it's not a really expensive, high-end uh, multimedia system, but it's pretty good for this kind of van. Uh, Winnebago uses the uh, the uh, trim. I know some of the other vans. This is a, an applique. I think they make like a burl wood, and they make you can have just standard black, and then you can have this silver. I think I like the look of the silver. Um, some people don't like it. It can be a little reflective. Um, you've got this clipboard. I think this is from the cargo van layup. A workman may put his uh, checklist there. 
you've got uh, an upper an upper glove box and this is cooled with the air conditioning vent and then you've got a lower glove box uh, and then you got a cubby and then this is um, this is one of the things I recommend um, this is uh, uh, LED voltage meter so you can put those in the variety of the um, ports around the van and you can see how your house battery as opposed to your engine battery and your charging uh, is doing. Let's turn that off. Okay, and um, I'll pull this out. So let's pull this back out and then one thing is um, I learned on my last van is that these seats have an alarm sensor. Uh, if they're not fully forward when you put the car in, uh, in drive, an alarm will go off and uh, it's quite annoying. All right, what else we got? Um, all right, you have your uh, in-out step uh, button I showed you. That's your whole coach 12 volt disconnect. I find the dog likes to play with that and if I don't have any power, I, uh, I know that he's pushed that. I keep his dog bowl down here, so that's probably I'm probably causing a problem myself. Um, here is your um, uh, winterization system. You turn this valve, you hook your pink stuff to this port, and the water pump will draw it through the systems. So that's a nice uh, access port. Another 12 volt, uh, 110 volt. These are some light switches. Uh, yeah, that's the and then this is the outside light and then um, this is your awning uh, in and out control and uh, they recommend you have the door shut on the on the uh, standard van the carefree awning um, I don't think has that warning I think this awning is just a little bit angled differently so they put it on here um, I think the standard van my standard van didn't have that it had um, it had, uh, you could open and shut it with the door open. It also had a light, the integrated light, so that's what that panel there is for. Um, also on the inside of the van, just like on the Sprinters, it has an awning control switch right here. See, it, I find it clear. So, this is my review of the uh, late 2015 Winnebago Travado uh, 59G on the Dodge Ram Promaster chassis. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, please uh, leave me a comment or a question if you need any more information. I'd be happy to help you. Um, but uh, I hope it uh, helped you understand the van and some of the features a little bit more than the other videos. And uh, it helps you make a decision as to what you'd like to have. Anyway.